this tutorial shows students how to use the F statistical tables to find critical value for an F test. When using the F statistical tables, we note that they differ from the T statistical tables in terms of the fact that along the top of the tables we do not have a heading containing different significance levels, but a heading containing the first type of degree of freedom we require. The row column also contains degrees of freedom which we will need. The significance level is selected in advance, and in this instance I'm using the table for this p-value of 0.05. Different tables are provided for 0.01 significance levels and 0.1 significance levels. When we're looking at obtaining a critical value from the f-tables, we first have to determine the degrees of freedom of the numerator and the denominator. This is essentially the two elements which were used in different types of tests. The test we will be referring to is the f-test in regression analysis which allows us to assess whether numerous coefficients are jointly equal to zero or whether we impose constraints that certain coefficients sum to a certain value. In this instance the degrees of freedom for the numerator are given by j and the degrees of freedom for the denominator are given by n minus k. The degrees of freedom for the numerator, j, which is at the top line here, essentially refers to the number of constraints which we impose on our model. So if we impose in a regression equation that beta 3 is equal to beta 4 is equal to 0, we have two equal signs in that hypothesis and we have two constraints. So j is equal to 2 and we use column number 2. If we hypothesize that beta 1 is equal to beta 2 is equal to beta 3 is equal to beta 4 is equal to 0, we have got four constraints. We count the equal signs and there are four separate equal signs giving us four constraints. If we wish to assess the hypothesis that beta 1 plus beta 2 is equal to 1, we have one equal sign and one constraint. So we establish our degrees of freedom for the numerator as the number of constraints which are imposed. For the denominator, this gives us degrees of freedom along the row elements of our table. The degree of degrees of freedom here are given by the number of observations minus the number of parameters in the estimated unrestricted model. So if we have data on 100 individuals, and we estimate regression with five parameters estimated, so that is an intercept term and four slope coefficients, our degrees of freedom are equal to 95. Likewise, if we have 20 observations and we estimate two parameters, so a slope coefficient and one intercept coefficient, this results in degrees of freedom equaling 18. So in the example, we can have two constraints 18 degrees of freedom given by n minus k, and we'll get an f critical value of 3.55. If we have four constraints and n minus k is a thousand, we have an f critical value of 2.38. For values greater than 1000, we can observe critical values as such. Again, f distribution tables may differ depending on the statistical table which you are using. The degrees of freedom for the numerator and denominator may vary, but the critical values contained within the table will always be the same. To highlight finally that the top of the table does not give the different significance levels, the significance level must be chosen prior to commencing the test and different tables will represent different significance levels. In this case, the significance level is the 95% significance level or the 0.05 level. That concludes this tutorial. Further tutorials are available on YouTube.